Dr. Stephen Greer claims he meditates to interact with extraterrestrials called CE5, short for Close Encounter of the Fifth Kind. A Close Encounter of the Fifth Kind is an event that involves direct communication between aliens and humans. With his so-called CE5 program, he teaches people to communicate with aliens, such as ghost hunters using the Ouija board to contact the deceased. And sometimes they make contact with evil souls and dark entities. They say, the question is, is it also maybe possible to come in contact with evil aliens? Ground. In the video Guided CE5 Meditation with Dr. Stephen Greer, he says in a sitting position, Namaste, at the end of his session. Manifest this time of enlightenment. Namaste. Well, thank all of you. If you want to emerge back into your rooms from your journey. We're going to celebrate. I wish I had a boa, but next time we'll have a boa. I know I'm very silly. Um, my children are rather embarrassed. Why not? But we're also going to toast. So if you wish to have a little toast, you can do a, an astral virtual conscious one if you don't have anything. This proof that Dr. Stephen Greer has no respect for Hindu culture and he does not understand the value and meaning of Namaste. Namaste is supposed to be said to an individual, not like Stephen Greer says to a group of people online. You don't say Namaste in the end because it's a greeting. What Stephen Greer does, he says hello at the end of a job interview. To give you an example, you say Namaste standing while making a bow towards the person you want to show your respect. Stephen Greer said Namaste in a sitting position. That's pure disrespectful. You must have seen it somewhere online. Dr. Stephen Greer meditating with a group of people somewhere in a dusty, dry desert environment. For a payment of two cups of coffee, you can even download the app from Stephen Greer that helps people make contact with aliens on their own. In a guided CE5 meditation with Dr. Stephen Greer, he says Namaste at the end of his session. The Thai people globalized this word Namaste 20 years before India and the Thai people have never ever forgotten the good traditional values of this word. The Thai people say Sabadi Kra or Sabadi Kra for females. So gratefully it compels you to say Sabadi Kra or Sabadi Kra back to them. And no matter it is the king of Thailand or the fender on the street, they say it to you whether you are a Thai national or a foreigner. The Thai people borrowed that learning from a part of the world which is now called India. In Hinduism, God resides in everyone. In you, in me, in everyone. And Namaste is a way of respecting to other persons in us all. The gesture literally means I am bowing down to the divine in you. Namaste is the union of spirits who respect each other's existence. Namaste teaches that we must respect the God in every human because the God is not in any temple or any church, statue, etc. The God is in you and me. We must respect each other, but the foolishness of the world is we don't respect human beings anymore. We respect reputation, status, position, fame, well go on and take a selfie with a church decorated in gold where a man walks around with a basket asking for money well that contradicts what Jesus was against a Buddha statue piece of square stone we call Mecca or a Gohanson as the teachings clearly write no images or anything should be praised but we feel proud of it by making a selfie but we don't go and take a selfie with the fireman police officer or a surgeon who keeps you safe and therein lies the foolishness this word called Namaste, which taught respect, has been completely forgotten. We have forgotten to respect the God in the human being. And that's exactly the reason why we live in a world today. We are divided into upper class, middle class, lower class and the invisible. And this value in the world Namaste is totally forgotten and twisted today like Stephen Greer is doing. Now you know exactly the value of Namaste. And I find it very interesting that this word comes out of the mouth of Dr. Stephen Greer. And he says this 
while he is the one who wanders in the darkness of ignorance, deception and hate towards others. I can give you a few examples of his deception. Here is a testimony from someone who participated in the outdoor CE5 meditation. Quote, the worst and the most disheartening part of this experience was witnessing the CSETI's field contact protocol. At the site, a number of devices such as a radio transmitter, magnetometer, radar detectors, infrared scope, etc. were arranged. Even though I don't doubt Dr. Greer may have had several ET experience in the past, what I observed in the field that night is inconsistent with the hyperbolic claims suggesting he can factor ETs and make them appear. His actions and the facts demonstrated that at the very least this is a bold exaggeration. Not surprisingly to cover up for this assertion Dr. Greer made sure to bring out a series of possibilities for a no-show prior to the field excursion. According to him, sometimes the ETs might not appear because there is someone in the group without good intent and a clean heart. Or the ETs feel threatened by the US military or even though they won't fully materialize they will manifest in a thousand other ways. Conveniently there were plenty of people at hand, mostly staff, who would come forward to state that while meditating they saw this or her that. And most amusing thoughts were Dr. Greer's remarks at the beeps and sounds made by his electronic equipment. You see, according to him, an ET he named Walter communicates via one of these electronic devices. And Dr. Greer is able to recognize which beeps he makes. Additionally, the large quantity of wow and oh my god remarks coming out of Dr. Greer's mouth over unseen or imaginary non-events was sadly hilarious. Oftentimes he will point his mega laser beam at some spot in the sky and claim he was seeing partly materialized ET craft. Of course, anyone else saw nothing even though according to him many significant events were taking place that night. Because we were such a great group. To make matters worse, Dr. Greer supplemented the lack of any occurrence with information he received via remote viewing. I found his charade insulting to my intelligence, intuitiveness and psychic sensibilities. I know ETs were not present that night and I would have respected Dr. Greer if he had been forth right and acknowledge the fact that there was no activity. I would understand it happens because I experienced firsthand Dr. Greer's tendency to fabricate, exaggerate and embellish non-events at the SCETI field trip. It then follows that the accuracy and the validity of everything he claims in his books is in question since it's evident that at the very least he stretches the truth to a point where it becomes short of being an outright lie. Quote. Or astronaut Edgar Mitchell, who had some sort of collaboration with Stephen Greer. Quote, I cooperated with Stephen Greer some years ago, and he began to overreach his data continuously, necessitating a withdrawal by myself and I believe several others. I have requested to be removed from any website announcement, etc. But see, that has not taken place. End quote. So he is not happy at all with Stephen Greer taking advantage of him and basically all claims made by Stephen Greer about Mitchell is just not true. He says, quote, I object to being misused in this fashion and acquire guilt by association with certain claims that simply are not true, end quote. Hmm, doesn't sound this familiar. Stephen Greer cut and pasted, apparently, in an interview with a lawyer he called Daniel Sheehan to defame two characters in which the documentary gives the impression that the lawyer has some involvement and the lawyer felt compelled to post an official statement on Facebook to address this this information created by Stephen Greer. I just gave you three huge examples. Now here's the irony, Stephen Greer has studied and practiced transcendental meditation and Baha'i religion for years. Yo on that cookie monster says, quote, I know some Baha'i, nice people and not half as unscientific as Dr. Stephen Greer, end quote. Well, here are some social principles of Baha'i religion. 1. Unity of God. So he says Namaste but disrespects the God in other people and Namaste and the Hindu tradition. Point two, 
unity of humanity. He clearly is creating a separation like Osvaldo Franco a little bit indicates. Elimination of all forms of pre-justice. He commits character assassination on Mellon, Alessandro, Tom DeLong without form of proof. World peace and new world order is the rule. You don't make world peace if you destroy the unity in ufology with lies. Here's another principle, harmony of religion and science. Stephen Greer abuses religion and has no knowledge of science. Independent investigation of truth. Stephen Greer lies and makes people believe in his lies. Backbiting and gossip are not allowed is the rule. Well, I gave you three very good examples of backbiting and gossiping. Begging as a profession is forbidden. Stephen Greer asks people to share his documentary to promote his fake documentary and his paying app. Just like that. CK Legion says, quote, You know he's most likely not going to respond. That could be seen as admitting he was wrong. As since he was on Tyler's channel, chances are he knows your deal. I think he'll be. Do you honestly think he will react? End quote. No, I know he's not going to respond. From my experience, he or his representative only responds when it gives an advantage. A. They responded when I show interest in sharing his documentary. B. They responded when I tricked them into thinking I'm going to buy their app, but I have a question. And C. They ignore me twice when asking questions they didn't want to address. So, simply, Siggy Legion answer C. Stephen Greer practices Transcendental Meditation, a specific form of silence mantra meditation. And he was not silent during his livestream meditation session. He was babbling around. Whether he teaches this kind of meditation to people is unknown. The volunteer who represents Stephen Greer's app answers my emails and cannot tell me what they exactly practice and teach. The volunteer says, quotes, there is no specific type of meditation that is used. It is a guided meditation by Dr. Greer with time of silence, end quote. So I assume this is about transcendental meditation or part of transcendental meditation mixed with other exercises. I don't know. That they can't answer my question about what type of meditation they teach, but teaching people guided meditation is something we should worry about. And there is something I need to tell you right now. Study found that long-term meditators have more frequent lucid dreams compared to people without meditation experience. A lucid dream is a type of realistic dream where the dreamer becomes aware that they are dreaming. Better yet, a lucid dreamer determines and can control his own dream. I pay close attention. Stephen Greer introduced people to meditation. In his live stream, he also literally tells you what to imagine. So people who at that some point can realize and control their dreams. And I'm not talking about fake photos, drones, airplanes, etc. that he captures outdoors and claims the aliens made contact. I'm just talking about people who have installed the app and end up in a lucid dream by practicing meditation independently. For the dreamer, the alien encounter is real, but in reality, it is just a dream. It's a lucid dream. Question, what do you think of this story? Use the comment section to share your thoughts on this topic. If you are new here, click the red subscribe button and enable the notification icon. Watch more videos about Stephen Greer you see on the screen.